many clinical trials fail and these failures are expensive. And in this video we'll talk about failure rates, the cost of drugs and bringing drugs through development, and maybe try to introduce some opportunities for um, minimizing the impact on these failures and expenses. For our discussion about failures and costs, um, I've pulled some data from a, a publication from scientists at Eli Lilly, and that reference is in the bottom left of this slide. The probability of a lead being advanced from the preclinical stage, animal testing, and into phase one trials is 69%. The most challenging step in all these transitions is the movement from phase two to phase three with a probability of success of only 34%. This is why phase two trials, especially 2B, are called pivotal trials. This is the first time you can establish efficacy in humans. And a lot of assumptions, assumptions all the way back to the target selection are then established once you show efficacy in phase two. If you work through these probabilities from phase one through approval, the overall success from an IND, which is a start at phase one, to approval is 11.7% or approximately one in 8.5 molecules. These data are somewhat dated and only from one company, but the trend is still valid. People often cite a clinical trial success rate of about 10 to 15 percent. Let's look at the costs on the bottom of the screen. The pie chart shows the fraction of total costs based on each development stage. What is the total cost to bring one drug to market? In 2016, the total cost to bring one drug into the marketplace was estimated as 2.6 billion US dollars by Joseph DeMassey of Tufts University. That figure includes not just the cost of the successful drug, but also the approximately seven and a half other molecules that failed in clinical trials. What are some lessons from these numbers? Well, many molecules advance into phase two only to fail 34% success rate because of lack of efficacy. Such a failed molecule will have accumulated over two-thirds of the development cost um, just to fail in phase two. The lesson is clear. Improve efficacy confirmation earlier so that fewer doomed costly molecules are lost during phase two trials. This idea has been called fail fast, fail cheap. Identify bad leads earlier so resources may be spent on more promising molecules. If successful, such an effort would reduce the cost of developing drugs and also likely reduce the cost of drugs in the marketplace. The drug industry is aware of this opportunity and researchers are actively working to improve predictions of human efficacy in early discovery stages. The high rate of failure of drugs in clinical trials is a serious problem for the drug industry. But this problem also represents an opportunity, an opportunity to improve the early stages of drug development so that failure rates can be brought down and costs can also be brought down. 